Hi, and welcome again. This increasing equity curve is the main reason I like this strategy, and I'm sharing it in this video so you can also optimize it and maybe further improve these results. The backtest of this trading strategy showed positive returns of over 200% for a testing period of almost three months, and also a steady increase in the total equity. So today we will test this simple scalping system using Python. The strategy can be used in manual trading as well as in algorithmic trading. It's very simple and it fits for both trading styles. We will use the five minutes time frame to accelerate the pace of trading and increase the number of trades. I also needed to optimize the risk reward ratio and other parameters used for this trading strategy. This can be easily done using Python and numerical backtesting. The Python code that I'm using for this backtest is available for download from the link in the description of this video. So you can download it to follow through and use it for your experiments. This strategy uses two moving average curves to estimate the current trend. If the fast moving average is above the slow moving average, then we have an uptrend. And in the opposite direction, if the fast moving average is below the slow moving average, then we have a downtrend. In an uptrend, we only consider long positions. And in a downtrend, we only consider short positions. Then we can use Bollinger Band edges to trigger position entry points. So if we have an uptrend, we're looking for a long position. Then if the price crosses the lower Bollinger curve, we open a long position. And in the opposite direction, in a downtrend, if the price crosses the upper Bollinger Band, then we enter a short position. This is based on the assumption that the price will always converge to the center of the Bollinger Band after crossing extreme values. And on top of it, we are trading in the same direction of the moving average trend. So we consider this as a confirmation of the signal. The exact numerical values for the length of the fast and slow moving averages and the parameters of the Bollinger Band will be detailed in the coding part. These might not be the best values, but they worked well so far. So you might want to do your own research afterwards and use an improved set of parameters. Then when the trades are opened or when we have an open trade, we can set the stop loss distance in relation with the volatility of the market using the ATR and multiplying by a variable or a parameter that we will name stop loss coefficient. Take profit distance is just the stop loss distance multiplied by the take profit stop loss ratio, which is also a parameter that we can change depending on our trading style. And this is it. If you have watched my previous video, you would notice it's very similar strategy. I have just replaced the trend detection with the two EMAs, the fast curve and the slow curve, because I noticed it decreases the lag in the sense that it also increases the total number of trades. Now, there's only one way to find out if the system is worth it. Let's try it out and put it under the test using Python. So we will backtest this strategy on historical data for a few months and see what happens to our equity. And just another reminder, the Python code we will use now is available for download. There's a link in the description of this video. You can get it for free and apply your own experiments. And a quick hint, you might want to start by applying a better trade management approach since I haven't exhausted all the options on how to define the stop loss and take profit values. This might improve the results that you will see in the back test. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. The first cell is just for importing the data. So I'm using a uh, CSV file, the Euro US dollar uh, candles, five minutes time frame. The uh, dates are between 2019 and 2022. So we have enough data on the five minutes time frame. That's a lot of candles. And here we're just uh, reformatting the index. I'm just removing the fractions of seconds because these are not needed. And I'm casting the index into a date time format using the correct format. So now we have a correct format of the data. Then I'm filtering out all the candles where we didn't have any movement. And this is where the candles high is equal to the candles low. So we don't need these. These are usually days off and weekends and days where the market was basically closed. So we don't have any movement. We're not interested in this data. And uh, we're setting the index to GMT time after we have corrected the format. So this is just formatting the data. Then I'm using pandas underscore technical analysis module to compute the EMA, the slow EMA, which is length 50 and the fast EMA, which is length 30. So these are our two moving averages that will help us to detect the uh, trend direction, uptrend or downtrend. 
The RSI is not used here. I just kept it because I was experimenting on an exit strategy using the RSI as well. And this line computes the Bollinger Band. So it's a length 15 and the standard deviation of 1.5. Then we have the ATR, the average true range for um, the volatility measurements. And uh, this will help us define the stop loss distance and consequently the uh, take profit distance as well. And that's it. We basically join everything into our data frame. We have the data and that's our data frame. This is how it looks like. We have the uh, GMT time as an index, the open, high, low, close, the volume, the EMA slow, the EMA fast, the RSI, which we will not use now, but it's here in case you need to experiment on it. I kept a commented section of the code in here. This is our exit strategy. And we have the ATR. We have the Bollinger Bands. Uh, upper and lower and middle lines and so on. So we have all what we need to start this strategy. This is a function called EMA signal. It's going to take the data frame, the current candle as well, and the number of back candles. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to test if the fast moving average is above the slow moving average or below it, depending on which direction we want to trade. So it's going to detect the trend, but we don't need to test it for one candle. It's not tested for the current candle. It's also tested for the last consecutive candles. It can be the last six consecutive candles, eight consecutive candles and so on. And this is why we have the back candles parameter right here. So we don't want to uh, test the uh, EMA signal just for one candle. It might be too noisy to do so. We want the trend to be the same and confirmed for the last, let's say, uh, six candles. And if we consider six candles on the five minutes time frame, that's six times five, which means it's 30 minutes. So the last 30 minutes, we've had either an uptrend or a downtrend. You might want to change this one and test if you get better results than the results we are getting in this video. So that's it. I'm applying this function to our data frame, and this is what we will call EMA signal. I'm adding this into our data frame as a new column. So now we have the EMA signal or the trend signal. Then we um, can apply the function called total signal, which takes also the data frame, the current candles index and the number of back candles. So it would compute the EMA signal. It's using the previous function to compute the trend. If we have a trend up, so if the EMA signal is equal to two, we are in an uptrend. We're looking for a buying position in this case. And we're waiting for the closing price of the current candle to close below the lower Bollinger Band okay, of the current candle. This is what it does. So these are our two conditions here, in which case we have a long signal and we return two. In the opposite case, if the EMA signal is equal to one, so it's a downtrend and the closing of the current candle is above the upper Bollinger Band curve, so we have a short signal and we return one. In any other case, we return zero. I'm applying this function, the total signal, to all the data or the slice of the data that we have, the 30,000 rows that we have just sliced right here, just the last or the most recent 30,000 uh, uh, rows. It's almost three months of data. And uh, we're just saving all the signals, the total signal in a new column called total signal. This is going to make it faster for us in the back test. So this is how our data frame looks like. We have all what we had before. And on top of it, let me go just to the right. You know, so at the end, we should have the um, total signal column that we can see here. So we have a signal equal one, which means it's a short signal. Signal equal two, it's a long signal and so on. So we can continue. So now to visualize our signals, it's good to visualize things on the graph. We can use this cell to create points above and below the candles, wherever we have a signal. And we can plot the um, data frame and we can plot the candles like a normal chart, adding the Bollinger Band lower and upper bands, the EMA fast, the EMA slow, and also the positions of the uh, signal the short and long signals that we have just computed. And this is what we have. So it's just to verify and validate visually that things are working as intended, that we haven't made any errors in the code. And so we have our Bollinger Bands, the two moving averages and those signals. So these are short signals because they are above the candles. And this one is an excellent one. For example, we are in a downtrend. Look at the price. It went up. 
and it reached here it crossed the upper bollinger band and so it triggers a short signal anyway it's working sometimes you have these consecutive signals but these are just one signal actually we're taking the first one because as soon as we see one signal occurrence we're opening a trade and we open one trade at a time so these are discarded unless if we were stopped before that so we might enter the market again and now we can proceed with the back test i'm using the back testing uh, pi the size of a lot is 3000 here the uh, stop loss coefficient is 1.1 so the stop loss distance is going to be 1.1 times the atr and the take profit stop loss ratio is 1.5 discard the rsi as i've mentioned we are not using it for this uh, video so uh, we're initializing our variables and whatever we want here and now we can define the stop loss uh, distance so it's sl atr it's equal to the coefficient times the current atr the most recent atr value and the take profit stop loss ratio is equal to uh, this value and we're going to use it right here to define the stop loss and the take profits so this is how it works if the signal is equal to two so it's a long position it's a long position signal and we don't have any open trades we're going to define the stop loss value the take profit value as well and we're going to open a buy position using the stop loss the take profit and the size of the uh, of the trade again for the the other condition in the opposite direction if we have a short signal and we don't have any opened trades currently we will be defining the stop loss the take profit and using these to open a sell position we're going to define our backtesting conditions so we're passing the data frame my strategy class what we see here and the initial cash amount which is 250 it's in dollars let's say and the margin of 1 over 30 so it's a leverage 1 to 30 and now to the results we can see that we have a return percentage of 125 percent with the parameters that i've just used against a buy and hold return of minus seven percent almost so a maximum drawdown minus 17 percent that's a lot in my opinion i wouldn't trade anything below minus 10 percent as a maximum drawdown but the average drawdown is okay it's minus 1.2 percent the number of trades is 1671 and the win rate is 42 44 percent almost and um yeah basically that's it in a nutshell it's a winning strategy i could show you the uh, plotting so let's plot the equity curve as we can see it's a steadily increasing equity with few drawdown periods so this one is a large one remember that this is a three month uh, period overall so this i would assume this is like a couple of weeks of drawdown period so that should be okay two to three weeks of drawdowns the rests are the rest of the drawdown areas right here are relatively short but overall it's kind of increasing so it holds the potential i know you want to add commissions and so on it might eat from the uh, the profitability of the strategy but at least the indicators and the way of thinking uh, the way we combine the bollinger bands with the moving averages and the simplicity of the system is what's intriguing for me so it's very simple and it performs very well now could we optimize it further to make it really efficient and maybe deploy it live on a paper account why not just let me know in the comments section if you would like me to try it live forward testing it live on a paper account maybe you can do this for a future video and that's all i had to tell you for today i hope you found this video helpful if so please support by liking or just dropping a quick comment share your ideas let me know what you think about this until our next one trade safe and see you next time